Hey, what's up? I'm your host, Christian Patterson, here to bring you this week's edition of TV20's Inside Sports Report. Cleveland Metropolitan School District recently held their Senate Bowling Championship at Roll House Bowling Alley in Wycliffe. John Marshall faced off against John Hay for the girls' division, and Lincoln West took on John Marshall for the boys' division. It was, it was tense. It was very tense. Um, uh, John Marshall's a tough team. Lincoln West is a tough team. Uh, we're a tough team. So there was a lot of, uh, of high-stakes games here, a lot of rivalries at stake. Um, and just, as always in the Senate, uh, with it bowling, as silly as it is to say, there's always a lot of uh, tension going back and forth between the two teams. Competitively, I've learned to respect the other players and like kind of lift them up even when none of us are doing good. And like my, me and my team, we've grown as like a family. So we're all close and we love each other. Bowling at first was just something that I started off doing for fun. So now it's, it's become important because I've gained a family out of it. So it's just become a hobby now, very important. Coach Wade's bowling program at Lincoln West is fairly new compared to other schools, but he's delighted with the success they've had so far. I'm proud of the fact that every year we've been competitive. We haven't had a losing season yet, record-wise. Um, we made the playoffs actually six, oh sorry, we made, the, made it to the championship uh, five times uh, and one two. So we made it actually to the championship our first, no, our second year. We made it to the championship uh, and lost to Marshall, you know. So, um, but it's, it's really great because one thing about the kids that I have, um, they enjoy the practice and they enjoy working. Um, I don't have to, you know, it's really not a difficult job as far as teaching is concerned because a lot of these kids have a good work ethic ingrained in them. So I show them the basics. I show them enough for them to start off with and they go on their own and they, you know, we have our practice time, but I've had kids actually take and, and, and go on their own and then message me on Facebook and say, hey coach, we're at the bowling alley. They show me their score, you know, and show me what they're doing. And so when I'm at home, you know, they, and I'll go out and help them sometimes. But the fact of the matter is they'll go out on their own you know, in practice. So that, it, makes, it really makes for a good relationship between coach and player. It's really fun to bowl without deal meeting teammates and our friends. Most of them are my own friends who I go with. And yeah, it's really fun to bowl with our friends. And we got the best coach here. So. It's more, more fun. I've been coaching the bowling team for about three, for three years, three seasons now. Um, we didn't have a coach and I just really um, am passionate about making sure the kids have um, as many options concerning sports to play um, and then as a PE teacher I always want them to be able to do a sport or participate in a sport that is considered a lifelong activity. So for me bowling is about uh, helping them progress in an activity that they can do up until late in life and still enjoy forever. I always bowl with my family. With my family, I always just try to beat my dad, but I would never beat him. But bowling competitively, I just do my best, and it's actually been a lot better. It's been way more fun. I've enjoyed it. I love everybody here. It's amazing. Skill and technique are vital to a successful bowler. So the important thing for me uh, is to meet the kids where they're at. Um, one of my bowlers who is a senior this year who's graduating, he started off four years ago not even be able, being able to throw a hook. And he slowly developed and I worked with him and he now is one of my best bowlers and has developed a perfectly beautiful hook that'll go down the lane. So not everybody's like that. Some of the kids are bowling a straight ball and that's fine. Um, we just kind of take them where they are and be able to add to their repertoire of skills and knowledge and then uh, emphasize their skills of what they can do best. Some techniques I learned was just taking my time because I used to rush into things. I used to just, I always just grab the ball and just toss it. But I was just, now I just sit there, think about where I'm going to throw it and how I'm going to curve it, how much curve I'm going to put into it, how hard I'm going to toss it. And it's actually helped a lot. It depends on the oil because 
Sometimes if it's too slippery, I would go right in the middle and throw right, one-handed right in the middle, a curve. But if it's not too oily, I would step to the left so I can throw my ball out more and it will curve inside. Some of the techniques, well, I guess, depends on really how you bowl. It's like for me, I curve it so like, I only use my two fingers and I just kind of spin the ball throwing it as far out as I can. But for some people, it's just as simple as being able to throw your arms straight or just lining up correctly. Competitive bowling is very intense. One bad roll during the championship can change the outcome for the team's chance at winning. Because if you miss your uh, target, then you, you're just gonna have to pay for that. Like one mistake, then it will be a whole mistake for your game. So you gotta concentrate more and hit your target and give up to be a good release on your hand. I do hook a little bit because our coach teach me how to hook the ball. And what I throw the ball, that is his ball, which he gave me. Um, but a strike will have you on cloud nine. The joy of getting a strike, it's kind of like a rush of feeling. So for me, when I get a strike, I get pumped up and it makes me just want to keep going and going. And uh, it's just a good feeling and all. You can get all the strikes you want, but the team has to perform well as a unit to be successful. To be honest, it's really nerve wracking, but I'm feeling very confident and I know that our team could do this. With each other's support, we can accomplish anything. Ultimately, the continued growth of bowling in the Senate is important. It's something that I wish that, you know, that the Senate could, it could be a situation where it could grow. Um, our kids don't have, as compared to the, suburb, to the suburban schools, our kids don't have the resources that the suburban schools have. So for example, a lot of the suburban schools, most of the kids have their own equipment, and their own bowling balls and shoes. Um, and they, it could be quite expensive. I mean, I, I myself have over 20 bowling balls, and each bowling ball might cost you almost 200 bucks. So, uh, you know, for a kid to invest from the Senate, you know, a lot of times it can be very costly. A lot of them just don't have it. I say 90% of the bowlers in the Senate don't have their own equipment. They have to get their things from, get their shoes from, you know, get their shoes from the desk, come in here and pick a ball. I've donated, personally donated some of my equipment to them, uh, to my players, uh, and that's worked, that's worked well for our team. Um, but they don't have the resources that the suburban schools do. So I would like to see it grow uh, because there is sort of a discrepancy with the, the talent level as well. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the resources and the talent level. So while you may have a team that in the Senate can be dominant and competitive, then once they go out to districts, they have a hard time competing with some of the suburban schools that have more resources. So I would like to improve that if possible, you know. John Marshall won both the boys and girls division. Marshall girls beat John Hay girls 1,258 to 1,188. And Marshall boys beat Lincoln West boys 1,691 to 1,525. After being eliminated from the postseason in 2019, the Cleveland Indians 2020 season is vastly approaching and fans are super excited. The Tribe's home opener is scheduled for March 26 against the Detroit Tigers. And to keep fans engaged, the Indians recently opened the doors to their annual event, Tribe Fest. Tribe Fest was held at the Cleveland Convention Center. Tribe supporters were eager to meet their favorite players and experience a fun-filled environment dedicated to the fans. And the players were excited as well. Just meeting everyone, you know, it's um, getting to show a little bit of face, you know, to, to the fans. It's awesome to interact with the young kids, you know, and seeing the jerseys they wear. and. Um, just being interactive with, you know, your other teammates too. It's just a good time to 
you know, kind of just speak of who you are as an individual and when people don't see you, you know, as, as that all the time. It's, you know, they only see you as a player. So getting out to actually, like, show a bit individuality to the fans is, like, a super fun thing. It's fantastic that the people can be that close to the people they enjoy. The baseball players, Tito's great. You get a chance to be up close and personal with them. Because when you're at the ballpark, you know, they're out 60 feet, 6 inches, away from home plate, and you're in the stands, you're up in right and left field, you're not close. Here, you're down close, you can see, you can get the autographs, you can talk to the players, maybe get a little feel for this year's team and root a little harder for them. With so many different booths and activities available, fans were able to do everything from practicing their swing to learning baseball history. Well, what's nice is um, the community is involved. So it's just a, it isn't just the fans, you know, just going down to the ballpark. It's everybody interacting together. Part of the Baseball Heritage Museum. What's nice is maybe people might not be familiar with us. So they come down. We can talk about the history of League Park. We can talk about so on. And what's nice is this fan engagement. So they stop at all the different booths. They get a different flavor for everything else. It's kind of like a smorgasbord of baseball. Being able to go to these different places and people find out different things about different chapters of the Cleveland Indians and so on in the history, which is spectacular. Without bats, there'd be no baseball. So it's no mystery why the iconic Louisville Slugger brand was in attendance. So what we're doing here at Tribe Fest today is we're giving away free passes to come down and visit us. Uh, but it's just, not, not just that, but we've got this great exhibit over here where we've got some game used bats that we're getting in the hands of folks. Um, we've got a Larry Doby World Series bat from 1954. These are actually game used bats. Uh, we've got um, Frank Robinson's actually game used bat in my hands here. Uh, folks come in, put on a pair of gloves, get, get to check out. Uh, Omar Vizquel, you name it, all, all great all-stars, Hall of Famers, all belong to the Cleveland Indians. And then one of the really neat things is we brought one of our best hand turners, Mike, uh, up from Louisville with us to, uh, to hand turn bats and show us folks out, show folks up here at TribeFest how we used to make bats in the old days. Uh, it took, takes about 30 minutes to turn a bat by hand. We'll show you in the factory today how we make bats in 30 seconds. So we went from 30 minutes to 30 seconds, so it's pretty neat. The best part about this year's TribeFest had to be Lindor expressing that he would love to be re-signed by the Indians. I love Cleveland. This is a city, this is this a home, you know. Um, it's a great city, it's a great, you got great fans, and we got a good team and a great group of guys. The front office is good, the coaching staff is good, um, everybody, the club is, everybody that's involved with the Indians organization, it's great, and I love it here. Um, this is why I came up, and I'm extremely comfortable here. Um, I am not opposed to anything. Uh, like I said, make sure you guys write all about being a writer. I would love to be here in Cleveland. Thanks for watching the Inside Sports Report. If you would like to catch past episodes of the Inside Sports Report, classic sports, or any city championship games, head over to our TV20 YouTube channel and click on subscribe.